morning from Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today was Monday. It's almost dark, so the day is almost over. Uh, 42 degrees right now. It's mid 40s today. Uh, we had a whole day of rain and things are kind of muddy. And anyway, I'm doing a quick video before dark. Uh, there is one thing I wanted to clear up on some confusion. Um, I keep mentioning that I'm going to be taking the kitchen out of my current tiny cabin and putting it in the house and several people are saying uh, that's a bad idea because your guests are going to need a kitchen and the, you know, the guests are going to need a kitchen they don't need my kitchen <laughs> I have five upper cabinets and a lazy Susan and yeah vacationers do not need five upper cabinets and a lazy susan my stove is a flat top four burner with warm zone uh it's nice they don't the guests are not going to need something that nice uh, a basic uh basic electric four burner with an oven uh should be good enough my refrigerator is newer it's not huge but it's pretty big they don't they're not going to need something that size and so, uh, yeah, just because I'm taking the kitchen out of my tiny cabin and putting it into the house doesn't mean there's not going to be a kitchen in the tiny cabin. I'm taking my bed out of the tiny cabin and putting it in the house also. That doesn't mean I'm not going to have a bed for my guests in there. Um, and the thing about it is, when I move this tiny cabin, all of that stuff has to come out of there uh, while it's being moved anyway the upper cabinets the refrigerator the stove the lower cabinets you know they're going to be uh it's probably going to be raised up at an angle and then lowered off a truck and uh, i also need to reduce the weight in the tiny cabin when it's moved so all of those upper cabinets have to come out um the refrigerator the stove the dishwasher uh, the Lazy Susan and uh, there's another lower cabinet. All of that has to come out while it's being moved anyway. So, <laughs> with more information, uh, yeah, the guests, they can have, I'll probably leave a couple upper cabinets, you know, they'll need that and then maybe one lower cabinet with a drawer. Uh, another option would be to take the lower cabinet in the house and use that in the tiny cabin. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I have there, yeah, that's a long ways off as to how I, uh, renovate, you know, redo the tiny cabin to make it more vacation guest friendly. Uh, it's not really set up, uh, for that right now, but, uh, you know, without a huge effort, I think that can be turned into a nice guest cabin, a little rearranging, uh, a little bit smaller, um, kitchen and you know one of the upper cabinets i can use in the bathroom and yeah so yeah all of that's in the future i'm just thinking about getting moved into the house and one of my conditions of moving into the house is having a functional kitchen i've got a functional kitchen it has to come out of there anyway uh in order to move it and so yeah makes sense we're gonna do it what else is uh going on I got my best egg haul of the year today, February 1st. I do keep track of my egg production, and I like using this tray. There are six, uh, uh, six rows there. I have six flocks with laying hens and one flock with uh, all boys. So I can bring the eggs in here and, uh, and I keep track of, you know, these are white and true blues and that's an olivager, so I can keep track of how many eggs I'm getting out of those ladies and yep so this is how I separate them yeah this is a white and true blue flock looks like I got three white and true blue eggs uh, one of these is from 2.2 number two's daughter she hasn't gone broody yet if she does go broody I'll might start hatching her eggs and then that's one of my uh, olive eggers from uh, this summer that has just started laying nice big eggs um, this is the one with uh, Private Benjamin, uh, Carol Burnett, uh, Mary Tyler Moore, uh, Vicki Lawrence. She hasn't laid in a while. She lays a light brown egg. Uh, this flock is uh, there in with Larry, and this is Larry's brother Daryl's flock. Uh, white and True Blues, three of them, and then that's 2.1 eggs. She's a little olive egger. I have been hatching her eggs. Those are number two's grandkids. Uh, let's see. 
This flock is a mixed flock. This is Dragonberry, the Wellsomers flock. These are 4-H uh, production brown egg layers, the Highline Browns, and then these are um, various olive eggers. Some of these are my uh, third generation with two back crosses that I will be testing. They might have two blue egg genes. Uh, this flock is Black Copper Morons and they're pullets so they are just start to lay these are smaller eggs very nice very nice dark brown with uh speckles yeah another month or so i will be able to start hatching them once the eggs get a little bit bigger uh this flock i got three of my four leghorns have laid an egg i've got a um I've got mostly black, I've got a couple blue, and I've got one splash copper morons in that flock, and then I've got an olive egger in that flock. Um, and that's one thing, I have one olive egger in this flock and one olive egger in this flock when they were pullets. And they would be the only ones laying the green eggs. So that way I know uh, uh, when they start laying and I know which egg is theirs. So. And, yeah, so that's cool. And then uh, finally, this is a 4-H, uh, no, not a 4-H. This is uh, one of the production brown egg layers that I got from a battery, uh, battery hens. And that flock is not, uh, not so great. Uh, but at once upon a time, I said the end of January, they were going to start pumping out eggs. And today's February 1st, and they have started pumping out eggs. This is the spreadsheet I use on the egg production, uh, the dates, and then over here I have the various flocks with a listing of my laying hens, although some of those are pullets that have not started laying yet. But yeah, I just uh, keep track. Uh, there's a sum at the top, and uh, then I do a sum total for the month, and it looks like 335 eggs in the month of January. And we start off with like seven, three, five, five, six. And then the end of the month, uh, we we're 16, 16, 14, 19, 15, and today was over 20. So, yeah, and we got, uh, I've only logged 12 of them so far. But yeah, that's my spreadsheet, uh, open office. It's, uh, it's a freeware type deal, but yeah, open office is what I use. Well, it got dark before I was done yapping. There were some other things I wanted to talk about. Since I was on the subject of the tiny cabin that I will be converting into a vacation rental guest house. Uh, yeah, so the kitchen has to come apart anyway while it is being moved. And the, um, the guests will not need a big kitchen with five upper cabinets and a lazy Susan and all that jazz. So there will be some other changes that I'm going to want to do to this tiny cabin before uh, turning it into a guest house. There is a half wall in between the kitchen and the front door and that will probably come out. That will create more room for like a little uh, two person table, uh, something like that. And then uh, I'll be taking my bed with me. So uh, that's the thing about um, vacation rentals is I'm gonna want more sleeping areas. I was, uh, I've actually have experience in this uh, <laughs> in this before I was a hotel manager for Marriott for almost a decade in my 20s and um, so yeah uh, most of the hotels I managed were 130 or more rooms and this time I've only got one room so that's good so I will be looking at uh, you know a regular nice bed for the bedroom but then having alternative uh, sleeping options you know a futon or a uh, you know, uh, some type of fold-out sofa here in the living room to provide more sleeping options. I'll be looking at that also. And yeah, people will suggest Murphy beds, but I have so much experience with Murphy beds in my hotels that they are, oh, they're a pain. And we try not to rent them to people with kids, and but that's the primary purpose is having an extra bed to put, yeah, so Murphy beds are uh, more trouble than they are worth in my experience. But, uh, yeah, sleeper sofa, a futon, uh, something else to create more sleeping areas. I think that's going to be better than having five upper cabinets and a lazy Susan. 
So I know some people were saying, don't touch the kitchen, you'll be able to rent it for more money if you leave the kitchen intact. And in my experience, that just is not true. People do not need all that cabinet space. And what they will pay more for is more sleeping uh, accommodations. So I will be doing that. Uh, what else can I tell you? Some suggestions to uh, just leave this cabin where it is here on my current property and rent it out. And, uh, well, as far as renting it out for, uh, I don't have a septic or a flush toilet. So, that's strike one. Um, you know, I probably could still rent it out for, like, vacationers or something like that. But I'm 45 minutes away, and that's just gonna, that's probably gonna be more trouble than it's worth. Uh, other suggestions to rent it out full time. Uh, just leave it here and rent it out full time. Again, well, there are different regulations for full time occupancy than there are for vacation uh, uh, rental. So there's that. But um, again, I don't have a septic system or a flush toilet here. So renting this out to somebody full time is uh, just not, not a good option for me. What else can I tell you? Uh, um, yeah, I I do not envision myself renting this tiny cabin out 365 nights a year. Uh, that's the one beauty of being my own hotel manager with an, and owner of the property is I do not uh, I do not want a ton of extra work, and I, I probably couldn't rent it out every night of the year anyway. Uh, there are the two festivals each year, uh, June and October, and so a week each time, that'll be good. And then, you know, if I only do 30, 40, maybe 50 nights a year total that I'm renting it out, that will be more than uh, sufficient uh, for myself. Um, and because it's a lot of work, you know, when you've got guests, you're on call 24-7 when you've got guests. And uh, so, yeah, I'll just uh, kind of take it easy as far as making this available for, um, for uh, vacationers or guests. And, you know, I probably, a lot of YouTube uh, fans or viewers, subscribers might want to come for a night here or a night there. Uh, I, you know, that stuff is... Um, will probably be more than enough for me. Those two, those two festivals are really the only long-term stays that, you know, um, uh, that I would be wanting to, wanting to do. Um, though that'll be my bread and butter for the year, uh, are those two long-term stays for the festivals. And then I might not, you know, I might have a three-night maximum or, uh, you know, I can do whatever I want. It's it's my bobblehead B and B, so I can make it available when I want and uh, make sure that I'm able to uh, keep up with it and not overextend myself as you know as far as that goes. Also, suggestions to to take it down to the new property and rent it out full time there. And again, there are different regulations when you talk about full time occupancy. And that can, uh, you know, having full-time renters, it's not for everybody. Uh, maybe the right situation would come along in the future where it's a mutually beneficial situation. I'm not just, uh, you know, uh, interviewing random people off the Internet to come live, uh, uh, you know, 100 feet away from me full-time. So I just I do not envision myself running it out full-time in the near future. So, uh, what else can I tell you about this tiny cabin? It, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll move well. There will, I'm going to take, you know, as much out of this to lower the weight as possible to get it over there. And I've been watching other people and uh, listening to other people's stories who have finished out a cabin and then moved it afterwards. And there will probably be some damage that has to be repaired uh, from the move. Um, I've got drywall up and there, you know, it's going to be shifting a little bit. So there's going to be drywall cracks and, um, you know, stuff like that that are going to have to be repaired. But, you know, all of that is far or months, months, months into the future. And I don't have to have that all set in stone right now. So those are just my thoughts as far as the tiny cabin. 
and uh, there will be a kitchen, there will be at least one bed, there will probably be multiple sleeping accommodations, there will be a flush toilet, there will be a shower. Uh, that's another thing is I have a small water heater. I might think about upgrading that if, uh, you know, if you've got two, three people wanting to take showers consecutively, that little water heater is not going to handle it. So that might be something I, I think about changing out. And But no major overhauls. I'm not going to just rip the whole thing down and start over again. Uh, the ceiling's great. The walls, as long as they hold up, they're great. The floor is great. Um, you know, the walls and the bathroom. And, you know, so only, only a few minor things before I start renting it out. One last thing for this overly talkative, boring video is that Papa Pepper link to his channel up there and a link down below in the description click on show more and it'll show the link and also the link will be down there to my new teespring store that papa pepper has inspired and uh, he motivated motivated me to get started on that uh some of you will, will recall that yeah yeah uh drew when, uh, when Drew had his business, uh, he came up with this design for me. We had another design that we came up with also. Uh, Drew has since moved on from that, so I didn't do any more with the, with the t-shirt merchandise stuff. But Papa Pepper is getting me back into it. So I went ahead and set up my Teespring uh, merchandise account. I will put a link to it down in the description below it is up and going uh it'll be a few days before it shows up on youtube uh it'll show up right underneath my videos since i have 10,000 subscribers now i can take advantage of that teespring service so what i'm doing is i'm making the original the two original designs available here is uh this one i'm calling groovy eggs this is my groovy eggs design oh and that little o Oh, wait, other side. That little O, that's, uh, that represents number two. <laughs> she lays little light brown eggs, so the O is uh, representative of number two. But, uh, so yeah, these are available. T-shirts, um, hoodies, uh, long sleeve shirts, and, and I have a mug. Um, the mug is in the Groovy Eggs store. There's a store for the different designs. But the mug has this design on one side, and then it has my cabin design on the other side. So the coffee mug, you'll get both of my little logo thingies, one on each side. So I am going to go ahead and make these available for a limited time until Papa Pepper and I can uh, finalize another design or another design or two uh, here in the next month. So these will probably only be available in the month of February and then uh, uh, hopefully we'll be coming up with some new cool designs thanks to Papa Pepper uh, in the near future uh, maybe by the end of this month I have I can't predict the future but yeah so check out my merchandise I got a Teespring store I will say which one uh, there's a the best deal is on a long sleeve uh, the long sleeve t-shirt I think I've got that uh, price marked down pretty well I uh, yeah the price yeah see now I'm not I'm not a big fan of selling t-shirts and merchandise and stuff because I don't buy it you know I uh, for some of you if you can't afford it don't buy my stuff go, go down to the local uh, you know thrift shop um, I know in Russellville there uh, they uh, resell and it goes to uh, you know women's abuse shelters or uh, youth programs so you know if, if yeah if you can't afford it then don't buy it go go get yourself some some cheaper uh, recycled and reused uh, t-shirts and yeah I'm the world's worst t-shirt salesman and that's okay. It's, it's a fun thing, and it does help me out. I do get some proceeds from that. That will hopefully help me move along in 2021 and get all this, uh, all this renovation and moving and, and uh, opening uh, the bobblehead bed and breakfast uh, this year. So if you want some merchandise, uh, that coffee mug, I do like the coffee mug. It has both the designs on it. All right, enough yapping. Thank you for watching, thank you for everything, and take her easy, everybody. Hey, Grumpy.
Grumpy. Say goodnight, Grumpy. Meow. Meow. Grumpy don't care. It ain't bedtime or eating time. It's catching bird time. Please don't catch a bird, Grumpy.